channel. Sorry, this is the other day, a bit lumpy, but we're just heading out a loose bay. Just got the boat in the water for after more. Day three, the first two days have been pretty much right off in terms of wind. But we finally hit a day where the wind's only due to get up about 10 miles an hour. So we're gonna get out off the drop off, fill up with mackerel, and then head right out, hopefully getting some tide and get amongst some tow. So it's the first proper decent day I've had this season. I mean, it's only the third day that I've had at the boat season actually, just because of various things that have happened. So looking forward to getting out. Hopefully we can get a few fish. So once we're out there, we'll take you out. Right, so we're back on the water. I quickly talk you through the gear we're using. So this person is probably the nicest rod I've owned. I've owned a few. It's part of the Daiwa Kenzaki range. This is an eight foot, eight to 15 class, 15 pound class rod. It's got a little kind of groove in there for a gimbal for a pad. I just team that up <clears throat> with a pen, Fathom 15 LD. I don't, I've got a two speed one, but for this fishing, I, I don't even think it needs two speed. That's just a cheap and cheerful reel, but bulletproof, it's light, it's reliable. And for this sort of fishing, when we're fishing with very strong tide at the minute, the way the, the way the gears are made on these, I don't know if you can hear that, you've just got very, very delicate little bits of clutch that you can just knock up so you can get your line just just as you want it to relative to how fast the current's going so I've, and i've had fin oil reels and stuff and I, this i think is for this type of fishing is great and that's what watson who's video who's video on users although he's got the uh, much more gucci uh, international version which is a lovely bit of kit line is just 40 pound braid then i've got about 10 foot of 100 pound leader that's tied with a with an FG, same sort of knot I would use for me lure fishing. And the reason I have that last bit is because when you get fish to the boat and they start thrashing around, it's easier just having that bit of stretch. It's, 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 firstly, it's easier to get hold of mono, but it's easier having that bit of stretch rather than just solid braid and potentially snapping tips. On the business end, very, very simple stuff. Running ledger, slider, sinker of your choice to match the tide, bead, pretty substantial snap link. I'll just figure of eight with a loop and trace itself as about roughly six foot of 200 pound mono. And you basically have your mono roughly the length of any fish you're likely to catch because they do roll, they've got very sharp skin as you can see, I got caught out yesterday. Um, and it just gives you that bit of protection and that's much easier to get hold of. Again, heavy substantial barrel swivel, and I use, it's controversial I know, but I like to use wire, and you can see why there, because we've had fish on that yesterday. The way I tie it, Flemish loop, and then crimp it, double back, crimp it down. I haven't used, I've just used ply, as I know I should probably have crimping, um, a crimping tool. Again, Flemish loop, crimp, and that. These are probably my favourite hooks for top fish, and they're from, from VMO. The 8 o catfish hooks, slightly offset. I'll just take the barb off and then I'll show you how we bait up. Right, so the bait, we just fell it up some fresh mackerel. There's two ways you can bait up. You can either go flapper, which I'll tell you what I'll do. Or just the head and shoulders. Watson's got a head and shoulder, so I'll go flapper. Nick the backbone out. And the reason for that is quite simply, I mean, there's no doubt fish obviously eat whole mackerel on the bottom. If you leave that tail on and tied like this, you're asking for bother. It'll just spin and it'll create your problems. So you can get shot of the backbone. You've got a nice, big, scenty bait, loads of blood and stuff coming out. What we were finding yesterday is that roundabout slack water, the tote were really finicky. They were grabbing baits and then dropping them. So I think what we'll do is the tide eases. We'll just make much smaller baits. So we've got plenty of hooks showing and hopefully hook the fish. Very, very, <coughs> very, very simple. Get the hook under the jaw, bring it out somewhere between the eyes. So you've got a lot of hook shown and then because we've only got like a little ridge on that hook, 
bit in a tube or a bit of rubber, put that on and you're good to go. And what quite often what you'll find when you get a fish, the bait will be gone, but that rubber will survive. I'm gonna go for a very heavy sink. I think this must be about a pound at the minute because of the tide. Clip that on and we're ready to go. And if you, what you can do when you've got a strong tide, you can let it down slightly slower and it just means everything stays dead straight. So that's the theory, let's put it into practice. just got on the bottom there and as I was saying if you put the ratchet on that'll just scream and scream and you'll have no line left but with this you can just put that up a bit it's very very sensitive and you can see there it's slowing that click down so you can just keep notching it until you're just in contact and if a top or even a skate grabs that just it'll it'll run off there's no there's no problem with that so the Fathom 15s for this sort of fishing great Watson's got a nice fish on the end, meanwhile I'm getting a bite as well. It's, it's, all, it's all happening all of a sudden, yeah. Hoping there. Uh, Feels decent, this. Yeah. Hoping these lines aren't wrapped. Oh, no. What? Hasn't come up. Still there? What's the matter? It's not there. It's not, has it come off? Unless it's swimming towards us, like. I did. Oh no, it's still there. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's got my line. Yeah, it's definitely got mine. So Watson's just got himself a nice tote and this is what you can do is put a cloth over the heads when they're on the deck it just calms them down. So we'll just get that out of the way. There he is. He is. But some of these fish give you a nice scrap out, didn't it? Nice yeah, powerful. I thought it was a lot bigger. Uh, just plenty of energy in it. Aye, uh, give you a nice, good scrap, powerful male fish. I think. Right. I don't know if I wanted this or not, but I'm into a skate. It's sort of screamed off quite fairly similar to a tote and then struck into it and I just know the familiar feeling of just slow powerful weight not really any head shakes or anything I mean this is an 8 to 15 pound class rod so I've got my drag set obviously but I've got a feeling I'm going to be here for quite a while luckily the tide's back right off so I'm not I'm not having to pull against any tide but something tells us I'm going to be here for a while So about 15, 20 minutes into it, it's safe to say, 8 to 15 pound class gear, it's not designed for skate fishing. Every time I get a metre or two on him, he just decides he doesn't like his head being off the bottom and just goes straight back down. The only bit of, the only bit of sort of, leverage I've got on it is probably from like that part of the rod over there it's just the rest of the rod's just obviously too soft to get any power in either eventually the fish is going to give up or something's going to give because I've got the uh, right got the energy to fight this which I'll see this is the problem get a little bit back and I, Size doesn't want it. 
and when he starts growing, there's nothing you can do. Right, he's, he's well off the bottom there now. I'm hoping. I'm hoping he's done. He's had a few powerful runs, and I can just do what we have. He has a leader. You get to the surface, are quite, quite tired and placid. You just in the lip as well. What an animal! What an animal! Amazing to see. I'm not, I'm not going to try and get him on the board or anything. He's, he's, Piers was spoke too yeah. soon. He wasn't enjoying that at all. Oh, I've just got a slice through my finger. <laughs> you, usually they're uh, they're done by the hit the top and they get to the top. This one certainly isn't. <laughs> Braid slice straight through my hand. Right. After that slight interruption. <laughs> Back the drag off that rod in case he runs again. Yeah, look at that. What an animal. I've got the ready on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. With the board right even. This is the third time we've had it on the surface. It's just hard trying to get the T bar next to it. But it's, it. The fish is done now. It's the first couple of runs I've had. It's tired. We just need to get, get it on the hook. I'll tell you what, credit to the Dio Kenzaki Road Range because. Eight 15 pound rods are certainly not designed for fish like that. I mean, I don't know how big that is, it's so hard to tell without it being in the boat, but it'll be 140, 150 quite easy, if not bigger. Right, let's just try. Ready for a beer tonight, I think. I think I'm happy with that. <laughs> well, as a forecast, southeasterly is picked right up. It's all right, but it's it's definitely making life a little bit tricky, and it is due to build. So I think we're going to give it another 20 minutes, get a little bit of just before the tide really picks up. 
Tom Watson's just getting a bike here. And I think we're going to steam back because it's about, we've got about 10 miles to get back to where we're going. So. It's not that live view, really. I'll just walk back. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, the wind picked up right out the base. So we've come right into Loose Bay. We've pretty much had action straight away, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Got a thorny. Nice fish, that. Nice female fish. Just had a couple of baby smooth hounds. And something, these sort of weird growths on this old girl. So we'll do her a favour. Just pull those off. Pretty disgusting, those, aren't they? Oh, it's gone, <laughs> it's gone straight and started sucking me hand. Yeah, go on. Nice. Nice one. Yeah. Sea fretch is rolled in and burnt right off. One thing I would say about boat fish, if you're getting in the water, you're looking at a reel. It's not, you don't have to, but your life will be made much easier if you go for a lever drag reel. The simple reason is, if you get a run, you can knock it into gear, and you know exactly, you're straight back to a pre-known position. You can obviously adjust it, but you just know exactly where it is just within one flick in your way. If you're using a star drag reel, it's a lot harder to judge if there's a fish screaming off. You, it's obviously doable, but it's just much easier to have a lever drag, I would say. It's a bit shy, but... Get him, get him back! <laughs> Fish at the minute are just mouth and baits, and then as soon as you strike in, they just drop them. Absolutely superb evening. Um, oh, it's potentially a decent one, that like. So, oh, <laughs> the water's gone totally slack, we're still getting bites but they're very finicky. So I've just put a float on and just suspended the bait above, above the bottom and probably within a couple of minutes if that has gone straight on then I've managed to hook the best fish of the day, it's probably at least 30, 35 maybe so, great scrap. Happy with that, we'll get it back in the tide. So, we've just missed three runs, but he has just got into one, yeah. He might be a bit disappointing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a 
wouldn't that? Oh, hang on, we've got some line. You're going to need to give him some line as well, Dallas. Yeah, yeah, the obligatory cut type carnage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well done. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm going to hold it. Yeah, well, this. Right, well, that's the end of the video. It's uh, been quite an emotional journey, that one. Um, started out really looking forward to it having not been able to get out when i was over there supposed to be over there for a week early june steering cable snapped well i was crap end of the trip i was back at my desk on the monday so i was really looking forward to that four day trip um went to pick my mate up early doors thursday totally forgot i had the roof tent in the car and uh smashed it straight into a steel pillar so that was a good start of the trip. You can imagine the mood I was in then. Uh, and then we got on the A69, Watson, who you've seen in the video, uh, who booked the digs, booked the digs at Maryport. Um, it just transpired that we'd been completely scammed. So luckily, we managed to get sorted out and in the process realized we weren't the first people to get scammed. So if anyone is traveling to the Muller Galloway and you're on an Airbnb and you're looking at a caravan park on Maryport and the host is called Gina, I imagine they just change the name daily with it being a scam, but just tread very, very carefully because I would hate to see that happen to anybody else. Um, pretty disgraceful way of scamming people on holiday. But anyway, luckily we got sorted. Um, the weather on the first couple of days was very blustery. We just had to make do with what we could, but then Saturday and Sunday, most of Sunday, uh, came good. We've got plenty of top, but bonus skate as well, which was quite uh, quite an ordeal, winding in on eight to 15 pound class gear, but um, credit to the Daiwa Kenzaki range, uh, stood up to it. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty impressive as well. Um, come back to my car, leaking power steering fluid everywhere so that's no longer garage on monday meant to be back over in scotland this weekend with gary so we're having to cut that short by a night and uh topped off by a lovely letter from northumbria police asking for 100 quid and telling us that they're going to put three points on my license in return for doing 37 and a 30 zone so coupled with falling on a rock and smashing part of my camera gear it's been quite an expensive 10 to 12 days so god only knows which calamities await us around the corner uh but i'll let you know anyway as always thanks very much for watching does appreciate it hopefully you enjoyed the video tight lines keep fishing we'll see you on the next one